54% of individuals have experienced some neck pain within the past six months, and uh, neck pain increases with age, most common in women and most common around the fifth decade. Finally, 37% of individuals who experience some neck pain will probably have some additional neck pain within a year. So let's just talk about the spine. So we're obviously gonna talk about the top and the middle sections of the spine. Um, the cervical vertebrae is what makes up the neck. Um, but we spend a lot of time in our clinic not only working on the neck, the cervical spine, but also the, the thoracic spine as well. Those two areas are certainly areas that we address. We're not gonna spend a ton of time talking about the core, but obviously core muscles are important and we do a lot of that um, in the lumbar area when we have patients with low back pain, but we also spend a lot of time working on some of our cervical uh, pain clients and teaching them how to engage their core too. I like to think of <clears throat> the neck is the foundation of the head. So you can see in the picture of the skeleton, think of that, those C vertebrae, those are the ones that are stacking up to create a strong foundation for the head to sit on. And when you see that the curve curvatures in the spine, that's normal. And so what we expect to see is those curvatures maintain their position over time. But unfortunately, what we see is a reversal of the curves and the head becomes forward, uh, shoulders get weakened, upper back gets stiff. And that's what we see here in this next slide. You can see the thoracic spine is kind of that middle area where the ribs attach to the vertebrae and through the middle spine. Normally what we call this on the left side picture is a kyphosis. That kyphosis is generally normal to see in most, in most people. Where we run into trouble is when the kyphosis gets accentuated and gets really forward um, you can see her shoulders are rounded, her head is forward. That's what we deal with a lot in the clinic and those are some of the things we try to make some adjustments with. So we'll talk next just about some of the, the top three things that we generally see in regard to uh, some, some neck pain problems. The first one, the fancy term for spine arthritis is spondylosis. And as you can see from the pictures, what you see there are varying levels of degenerative change in the spine. So as we start at the top, we've got kind of the brownish material, that's the vertebrae, and then we've got the purplish material, that's the disc that is the shock absorber in between the vertebrae. So that first disc is a normal shaped disc. It has good height to it, it has good shock absorption, good compression, uh, it helps to relieve compression. And then as we go down, we see how the, the, the disc can change. A degenerative disc, you can see it looks narrowed. It's not quite has the same, um, the same height as the normal disc. And you can see sometimes the fluid in that degenerative disc starts to dissipate. Sometimes we can have a bulging disc. We'll talk about that in a little bit where a section of the disc bulges out, presses on a nerve, starts to send symptoms down the arm. And then as we go all the way down the bottom, we can see here where we have some really significant degeneration as we age. And that's where the, the bones don't quite look normal. They look jagged, kind of um, uh, almost like a loofah sponge as I'll sometimes describe it. And then you'll see that bottom vertebrae almost looks like a top hat. So that's a true sign of some disc degeneration as well as some, uh, some degeneration of the bone too as well. So spondylosis is something that we see, as we've mentioned before, generally over the age of 50 more in women. Um, there's usually a lot of complaints of a stiff neck, a lot of pain, neck, shoulders, shoulder blade area, there are some occasional headaches, and this is super commonly seen in people that are sitting behind a computer for most of their career, not just their work day, but people that have been sitting behind a computer 20, 30 years, uh, a lot of them have some spondylitic or some degenerative changes. So we'll spend a lot of time trying to work on retraining posture. We'll talk about shoulders back, and we'll talk about that in a quick second. 
we try to do a lot of muscle tension reduction by doing some treatment. You can see in the picture, the first picture, it looks like they have a little metal blade um, where we do uh, some assisted massage techniques where we find some really great successes in using these, some of these metal tools to get uh, reduction in some of the muscle tension. We do a ton of uh, postural strength training. You can see the woman using the exercise band. We'll do a lot of that, as well as a lot of stretching. And the other picture, the bottom picture where the therapist is stretching the patient's neck. We also try to encourage a lot of aerobic conditioning. So a lot of people not only have degenerative changes, but they're also deconditioned. So we're encouraging them usually to start a walking program based on the weather. Obviously we're in New England, so it's kind of a crapshoot at best, as you all know. But if the weather is good, we want people out walking every day, you know, at least starting off with maybe a quarter to a half of a mile, but over time working on, on increasing that over time. So, and here's our first exercise. And so what we're gonna do is I'm going to take you through um, my exercise program and um, what we're going to do is we're going to find my exercises. I'm going to see if I can hopefully pull them up. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to, um, tomorrow, my assistant Allie is going to send you all a copy of the presentation. And along with that, we're going to send you a copy of the, um, the exercises. And the exercise program that we use in our office is an electronic format program that has videos. So the nice thing is you're gonna get a link with an access code, type the link into your computer, pop the access code in, and you'll see the four exercises, some instructions as well. You can go and then click on the video. All right, so here we go. So let me see if I can pull up I think I'm struggling with that. All right, we're gonna skip that. But essentially, I'm gonna show you the first exercise. So, let's just make sure I'm sharing my screen again. Y'all can see me okay? Good. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to just try to think about good posture and we pull our shoulder blades back. More often than not, what we find is we get our shoulders rounded, our head juts forward. And so we're going to try and just work on pulling those shoulder blades back. So actually come sit forward in your chair right now and just try a few with me. Just pull your shoulder blades back, count to about a count to 10 and then just let your shoulders just relax. Now we don't want them to fall down forward, but we're just trying to pull back, hold for a count of 10, and then let it relax. So that's just a nice way to work on just starting to try and change your posture, getting those shoulders to come back, to not be rounded. Um, and that will just help that area get um, more in an upright posture. So that's exercise number one. One of the second um, problems that we see is something called cervical radiculitis. And so this is a fancy term for um, nerves being pinched in the neck. So you can see from my screen, we've got the vertebrae on the side and through here, these yellow looks like strings are actually where the nerves exit out of the spine. And specific nerve levels go to specific areas down the arm. So down here, what we can see is sometimes here's that unhealthy disc, like we talked about earlier, it compresses on the nerve, sends symptoms down an arm. And so as an example, we can see C6 right here involves the part of the forearm and part of the thumb and part of the pink, the pointing finger. So if someone comes in and says, you know, my thumb is constantly numb all the time. I'm usually thinking about probably that there's something going on at that C6 level. And so we'll do some techniques to try and work on fixing that level at C6. So um, with cervical radiculitis, you can see this is something that happens with younger clients, usually over the age of 35. 
They all have neck pain. They usually also have some associated arm pain, some tingling and numbness. Sometimes it's specific, like what we can see in the picture there. Sometimes it's nonspecific. Um, they usually have a lot of difficulty with sleeping. They also have poor posture and again, spend a lot of time sitting at the desk. Part of our treatment for cervical radiculitis is we do a lot of traction work. We find that by being able to create distraction, you can see that on this top picture here, the gentleman's neck is being pulled away from his body and that traction, distraction movement is generally a very comfortable, um, comfortable sensation and most people have a lot less discomfort from feeling that, that, that manual traction from our hands. If we find that to be um, beneficial, we have a traction machine in our office and we'll generally transition them from our hands to the machine because the machine is very effective and can pull uh, quite nicely on the neck. Super comfortable and actually does a great job at relieving some of the symptoms. So you'll see, again, treatment is very similar. We'll do a lot of hands-on, we'll do a lot of massage, a lot of stretching. We do a lot of posture work. We teach a lot of strengthening exercises to the neck and shoulders. And then obviously we add in the cervical traction. Now, um, I'm gonna unshare my screen again, and we're gonna talk about exercise two, which is a chin tuck. So again, I'm gonna kind of just show you from the side. And so again, we have most of our clients are coming in, their shoulders are rounded, their heads forward. So the first thing we do is say, we, okay, let's pull those shoulders back first. And that, we, that was our first exercise. Our second exercise now is we're going to try and take that chin and just draw it in and tuck it in. So you can see my head starts in a neutral, regular position, and I'm just trying to tuck that chin back in and then let it relax. Sometimes this can easily be done by laying down. And sometimes it's an easier way to start the exercise just by laying on your back on your couch, maybe on the floor if you're comfortable getting up from the floor or right on your bed. And you can see my body is trying to be still while just my chin tucks in. All right, so again, throughout the day, we would try to do this for a holding for a count of 10. And then we would release, and we're looking again to try and do that maybe about 10 times a day. The third um, very common area that we see is just general muscular neck pain. And you can see from the pictures, the top picture is the, where the musculature of the neck from the back. So you can see obviously the person is looking away from us and you can see how the spine is in the middle and that kind of square bony thing is to your shoulder blade. And then there's plenty of muscles that work around that area. One of the main ones is the trapezius muscle. And that is a big, strong muscle that creates a lot of neck pain and a lot of neck stiffness. As well as the muscles in the back, as you can see in the bottom picture, when the person's turning their head, there is a lot of musculature over and through the front of the neck as well. And so many times, not only are we working on the back of the neck, but we're also spending a lot of time working through the front of the neck too as well. And many times, not only are we working on the front and the back of the neck, we're also working on the shoulder blade and that thoracic area as well. So in our clinic, we don't just like to think that your neck problem is only coming from your neck because usually that's only a part of it. Usually your neck pain is coming from your neck, but also coming from posture changes as well as some dysfunction in through your upper back. So as you can see, this is a problem where we start to see the number that ages kind of come down a little bit. Now this is generally over 25. These are common with people that sit all day behind the computer. They just have general neck pain. They maybe have some additional pain through their upper back. Again, they're sitting behind the computer. They're very sedentary. We see this a lot with students uh, between texting, heavy backpacks, and a lot of extra homework. They generally tend to have a lot of neck pain issues. For us, we spend a lot of time working on pain management again. 
<clears throat> we introduce a lot of breathing. Breathing from the chest, which many of us do, can create a lot of stiffness and tightness in through the neck. So we spend a lot of time teaching diaphragmatic breathing and we'll talk about that in a little bit. A lot of work is done on postural corrective exercises and we do a lot of upper back and core strengthening. So <clears throat> here's our last two exercises and I'm gonna again unshare my screen so you can see me again. And so again, we talked before about how we want to make sure that we've got our shoulders back, we've got that chin tucked in, and now one of the first exercises, we're just going to try and stretch our neck to the side. So we're trying to keep those shoulders square as we turn our head. Count to 10, and then we'll come back the other way, and then it's just the same thing, other direction. Turn your head, count to 10. Now the second exercise is a side bending kind of motion. So from here, think of trying to bring your ear towards your shoulder. And this again would be done on both sides. So my ear comes towards my shoulder and I should feel that kind of stretch all in through the front part of the shoulder, the top part of my shoulder. Now, most important with all of these, these movements is we need them to feel like stretches, but not really significantly painful. So if you're trying to move in a position and you have extreme pain with that, you probably need to get neck checked out. You know, it's probably something more than just a tight muscle or a little bit of some irritation. So it should feel like we're, we're helping to loosen up the muscle, but it shouldn't be so dreadfully tightful, uh, so dreadfully tight that you end up having a lot of pain. That is not a good thing. All right, so. So let's try that again. Good, all right, so let's transition into a little bit of some talk about posture. Um, we do see a lot of bad posture in our office and we are constantly encouraging better posture. We're gonna talk a little bit about some um, computer work and some phone work, but also um, how standing and sitting tables are, are really a nice thing to have in your office. And I always joke, you know, your mom was right. You know, you bet you gotta sit up nice and tall, keep straighten up. Bad posture is, is, is a bad thing for a lot of different so we almost all of us are constantly on our phone. So this is a great little just um, way to see how just the force of the weight of your head can work on just creating some bad postures and how the degree of, of curvature as it continues to move forward, you can see on the left side of the screen, there's no degree of angulation with the head moving forward. So there's a very light force on the neck, probably about the weight of the head more than anything else. But as that head continues to tilt forward more, you can see the weight of the force going on the neck increases significantly to this point of, at some points, 49 to 60 pounds. That's a lot of force going on the neck. And all of that force is actually creating some stiffness most stiffness issues through the neck. It's creating weakness in the upper back. It's creating a lot of compression through the front of the chest. So a lot of times people with really bad postures have even trouble breathing. It's hard for them to take a deep breath. So bad posture is just bad for the neck, but it also can affect a lot of other internal systems like breathing, like cardiac, um, if, our, if we're having trouble with breathing because of posturing, our, our heart is now forced to work a little bit harder than normal. And, and obviously that never is a good thing for our body. So the importance of trying to get ourselves in a better posture is really super important. And, um, and listen, I'm on my phone a lot too as well, so I, I, I get that. But we just need to try and be a little bit more mindful about our body position while we're on the phone. That's really the biggest takeaway from, for me tonight. 
So here's just a, a thought about posture and you can see uh, we have a plumb line. So from those of you that know what a plumb line is, if we took a string and hung it from the ceiling and dropped it to the floor, that's a true measure of up and straight down. That's gravity helps us determine something up that's straight up and down. Back in the day when carpenters were trying to figure out the wall, they would use a plumb bob to figure out whether or not the, the, um, the wall was straight or not. Uh, nowadays that we have levels and fancy mechanical things to do that instead, but posture, uh, using a plumb bob is a great way to, to determine posture. So you can see, and the, the, the caricature, caricature on the left that's in green, it shows that the plumb bob is right in the middle, from the front and back, and then from the side. And that's a person who's got great posture. Their ear and shoulders are lining up with their pelvis, that lines up with their knees, and then you can see it's equal on both sides. So when we look at posture to the right, we can see on the right side picture that where the person is really super forward postured, their head is very far forward, you can see what effects it's having on the neck, the upper back, and the lower back. And then the picture to the right, uh, the left side on the right side of the page is someone with scoliosis. So they have a lateral curvature, but again, you can see the hips are shifted, the legs are shifted, the shoulders and neck are all shifted. So all bad posturing can create some more musculoskeletal problems down the road. And so we really always wanna be spending a lot of time trying to get more towards those good pictures than towards the bad pictures. And so now I know a lot of us are spending more and more time on phones, on laptops, and obviously you can see what happens from that. Um, and so you have to move. It's really super important, especially if you're on a laptop or a computer for more than a few hours a day. Um, changing your posture is super important. So work on an email or take a phone call or do something and then stop and get up and move around. Um, sometimes sending a calendar reminder can be super helpful for you to remind yourself to get up. Many of us are, are at work, we're working, we're working now, many of us are at home. So before maybe at work, we had a nice ergonomic uh, uh, station that was very helpful to us, and now we're stuck at the kitchen table, and we're on the laptop on the kitchen table, and the, 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 the height is never really works well for us, and we end up seeing issues like the pictures you see. So get up, move around. Um, I have an older son who works um, in finance industry, but he has on the tech side in the finance industry. So he's on the computer for a good solid eight to 10 hours every day. And during COVID-19, he was home with us for a while. And so we rigged up this you know, home workstation. We had boxes, we had all these things to help him be able to be more comfortable while he was on his computer and he could be a little bit more upright with his posture. So and one other thing that I encourage, especially for people that are on the computer a lot, sometimes a little small picture or a small little sticker on the corner of your laptop is a great way to remind you of your posture. So you take a little picture of your best friend or your grandchild or someone that means a dear person in your life. And every time you see that little picture, it's your reminder to correct your posture. So not only can you do this on your computer, but you can put it in your kit in your bathroom mirror. So if you think about those exercises we, we talked about earlier, it's great if you can see what you're doing while you're doing those exercises. So putting that little sticker in the mirror or on your laptop is a great reminder for you to remember to change your posture. So here's just a picture of what should your posture look like at your desk. And you can see the gentleman's got a good, he's in a good supportive chair. His forearms are supported on the chair. His computer monitor is at eye level. His feet are flat, they're not crossed. Sometimes if we're vertically challenged, we're too short, our feet may hang and dangle under the chair. That can put a little bit more pressure on the back. And many times a lot of us start off in this position as the day starts, but as the day goes along, our posture goes south. And so 
<clears throat> this is just a nice picture, a nice little reminder of what your posture should be like when you're at the computer. And then, you know, we, we recommend a lot of these standing posture work tables nowadays. And uh, we have uh, three in our office for our office staff. We use a brand called FlexiSpot. There is another brand called Veridesk. And you can see um, how the, the, the one that's colored white, she's in a standing position, but by pulling on a lever on the side of the desk, she's able to lower the desk down and she can work sitting for a while too as well. So it just allows some variability with body position, allows you to sit for a while, allows you to stand for a while. And so the picture on the right side is just what are the ideal thoughts about how things should be set up based on height. So the woman in the picture with the dark hair, you can see she's maybe, I would guess maybe five foot two, five foot five. She's going to need a different workstation than someone else who is maybe six foot or taller. So it's really important that you individualize the workstation to your needs um, as best as you can. These standing posture desks go for generally around $250 to $350 in that range. So uh, sometimes you can get your company to reimburse you for it, uh, which can be a nice way and a nice benefit for you. So now you can use this thing at home and have a, a really decent work set up uh, while you're working from home. So <clears throat> the next thing I want to get into is just talking about um, diaphragmatic breathing. And so we talked briefly about that a few minutes before, and I really firmly believe that making sure that breathing is a part of our lifestyle is super important. So what I encourage my patients to do is to lay down in a comfortable position, either on their couch or in their bed. And you can see from the picture, the woman has a hand on her chest and a hand on her abdomen. And from the picture below the woman, you'll see that the diaphragm looks like a parachute and it separates the abdomen from the lungs. And so what we want to be thinking about is as we breathe in and out, instead of our chest breathing in and out forward, can we get our, our, our chest to breathe downward, push into the diaphragm so that way our chest is quiet. So while she's laying on her back, I'm, my encouragement to her is to say, take a breath in through your nose and out through your nose. And as you're breathing, get a sense of what's moving. Is your chest moving more than your abdomen? And so as you breathe in, try to get your stomach to expand up towards the ceiling. And then when you breathe out, just let it fall. So that way our lungs are expanding downward into the diaphragm and allows for better improvement of the chest not working too much and the abdomen working more. So this is also something I'll attach. I have a nice handout with this too as well. I'll send this along with you. I think trying to spend some time breathing every day is really super important. I try to spend about 10 to 15 minutes every morning sitting quietly helps me get my day going in the right direction. I can be mindful with my breathing and I can just be nice and relaxed. So I strongly encourage everyone to be at least thinking of trying this. If you're not that familiar with breathing, it's sometimes hard to start with, but give it a shot, try it. And many times what people find, it just helps them relax. It helps them be a little bit more on the calm side. And that could be a really very, very important thing and allowing people to just be relaxed. So along with neck pain, we also deal with a lot of people that have had some chronic pain, and people that have had pain for many, many years. You can see from the picture, you know, I think chronic pain is definitely something that has um, been around forever. And the nice thing is now, we're having a lot more research done in chronic pain, and we're realizing the importance of the brain and the mind when it comes to dealing with chronic pain. I use the analogy many times of the hot stove. 
So our body is constantly trying to protect itself all the time. And so the example I use, you go into your kitchen, you go to put your hand on the stove. If the stove is hot, your body will never let you keep your hand on the stove. You immediately just flinch away and guard getting away from that hot stove. It's very much how your body responds. If you have pain in your neck or your back, many times all of those muscles around your neck and back will guard and tense up and tighten. And that extra tension and tightness will increase the amount of pain that you currently have now. So being able to try and manage how you're dealing with the pain by trying to relax a little bit more, focus on your breathing, can be super important in reducing your overall levels of pain. So if you think of when you're in pain, what happens? Your shoulders hunch up, you tighten up you breathe a little bit more labored. It's just an overall very uncomfortable place. So trying to find a comfortable place where you can lay down and work on some breathing when that happens can be really effective in getting yourself to feel much better. I use the term a lot. I call, people will come in all the time and say, oh, I was you know, doing something and I had this sharp pain in my shoulder it lasted for like two, two seconds and then it went away. What do you think that is? They get all nervous. I'm like, half the time, my answer to them is, you know, I really don't know. I don't know why, why that happened. But if it's a one quick little zinger that comes on and goes away, I call that a tweaky thing. We don't know what caused that, but we can't be worried about that until it becomes a trend. So if we're finding that it's happening a lot, now we'll get a little bit more concerned about it, but if it's only happening on occasion, we need to just disregard it and not let our brain think that it's something not. Pain is normal. Pain is a normal response in our body as we try to get through life. Now the question is, how do we decide to respond to that pain? Do we guard and tighten up, or do we try and just relax and work through that as best we can? Because what happens many times, as you can see, is an increase in pain leads to people having anxiety. They have general health worries now. They're worried about work activities. They're worried about, they just never have fun because when they go out, they're never comfortable. That leads to sleeping problems. Now all of a sudden you go to your doctor, I can't sleep, what do I do? Oh, here's some medication. So now you're on all sorts of different medications. Maybe that affects your relationship with others in your family. And then all of these pain management issues can lead to other issues. Now you have to go to the doctor more. You need to leave work. So, you know, finances might be affected by that. And you can see you just get stuck in this chronic cycle of just constant pain. So the most important thing is we need to start finding some solutions other than medication that may help this. And I firmly believe that breathing is a great way to make that happen. So, you know, along with that, we talk a lot about fitness goals. And so fitness is super important for us to maintain good health. And I think there's three pillars of exercise for anyone over the age of 25. One is we need to be making sure we have adequate flexibility and adequate posture. So some stretching at home, some stretching at the office, focusing on our posture in the office is super important. Two is we need to make sure we're doing some conditioning, some aerobic work, riding a bike, walking uh, you know, around the neighborhood, swimming, something that allows us to get our heart rate at a higher level and helps our heart know how to work at those higher levels. So this max heart rate is a great way for you to gauge what is your heart rate when you're exercising, just by putting your fingers on your side of your neck on the same side, checking your pulse, it allows you to determine how effective are you working your heart rate at that point. And then finally, doing some resistance training either with weight training or bands or exercise balls, something that allows you to keep working on getting those muscles stimulated and getting them more effectively working. Super important. Now before we open up to questions, I wanna just make you think a little bit about neck pain and whether or not physical therapy is something that would be beneficial for you. And so it all comes down to, we can do three things when it comes to our pain. The first one is we can ignore it. 
we can decide to do nothing about that. And so I'm going to share the story that I love. I tell to all my patients. A, a, a friend of mine who has clinics in Pennsylvania told me the story, and it's perfect. He has an office in a, in a strip mall in one of his buildings, and he kept having a ceiling tile have a stain on it. And so the first point in time, he was like, whatever, I'm just going to leave it. It's fine. No big deal. He ignored it. And so then he got to the point where he started having people complaining, hey, do you notice that ceiling tiles up there? It's looking like it's stained. You maybe have a problem with your roof. So he finally said, you know what? I'm probably going to have to try and change that. I have to do something about it. So what did he do? He went to Home Depot and he bought a bunch of ceiling tiles. He said, you know what? The next time it rains, I'll just change the ceiling tile. We'll be fine. And then he had a patient who was a roofing contractor. And he said, I, I just keep seeing your, your tile is all stained. What's going on? He goes, oh, I have no idea. I just change all the tiles when it rains. And the roofing guy went up and looked at the roof and he goes, no, it's not your roof. You know, it's your, it's your, your, um, your HVAC. It's your air conditioning unit. And so he goes, he gave the guy a number of an HVAC guy. And so we called him and the HVAC guy came back and looked at it. He said, no, 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 it's not your HVAC. It's your roof, right? That's what happens all the time. We have a problem at, at home with something and we ask one person, no, it's not my problem. It's someone else, blah, blah, blah. So he finally got another guy to come in and look at the roof and he re found out that the problem wasn't over his suite, but it was two suites down. It was a problem in the roof all the way down. The water was getting through the trusses in the building, coming down, and he finally handled the problem, which was not above his suite, but it was three doors down. And so by fixing and finding that and keep working on it, he had a resolution to the, the water issue. Now he no longer has any leaks in that office. So I just ask you this question, how's your neck pain going with you right now? Are you sick and tired of it and you're ready to do something about it? And that's where we can come in by doing our manual treatments, our massage, our stretching, our posture work, our teaching of some exercises to get you going in the right direction. And so one of the things that we offer uh, for people that attend our workshops is we offer a free screen. So if you're unsure, if you think maybe you might be a candidate, but you're really not sure and you want to talk with myself or one of my physical therapists, we offer a free screen. It's a 30-minute consult. There's no insurance. There's no payment. And we do some quick tests to determine what's going on with your neck to determine, one, maybe you might be a good candidate for physical therapy, or two, maybe you might be a good candidate to do some things at home exercise-wise, or three, maybe you need to see your doctor. And so we can help you figure that out. Now, along with that, we also have the ability to just do some general physical therapy, which means we do an evaluation. We can look at your medical insurance and try to use that, and we can bill your medical insurance, and we do a full plan of care. We do an initial evaluation. We find out what's wrong. We help you determine the best ways to treat your neck pain, and we get you a plan to help you move forward. So we have some options for you if you're interested and want to learn a little bit more about ways to treat your neck. So um, if you are interested, you can go to our website a little bit later on, check that out. You can read more about our clinic, but then also to book one of those evaluations or that free screen, we just ask that you call our office and that's our phone number 508-393-9000. We're located right in Northboro. We're on the road on West Main Street, the road from Northboro to Shrewsbury, and we have that big rooster out in front of our building. If you've not been by our building before, um, if you know where the rooster is in Northboro, then you know exactly where our building is. So um, I, that is pretty much all I have to say tonight. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to open up the chat box, and we'll see if anyone had any questions. And maybe what I'll do is I will unmute everyone. And if you guys want to throw out anything, we'll, we'll wait a couple of minutes and we can um, see if I can, we can mute people. So feel free to um, either put a question in the chat box or um, Go ahead and just ask your question if you can. I can unmute some of you, but not all of you. So if, 
you can't unmute you, go ahead and just um, pop your question right in the box. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Judy. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. That was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Really, really good. Um, so I'm just waiting now, as you may or may not know, um, for the go ahead from my surgeons to, uh, to pop in there and get going on things. The last, uh, last surgery I had was on my um, L5S2, but um, we have had an MRI done of my whole cervical area, which uh, is probably the next um, cleanup. They're calling, it, they're calling it housekeeping after yeah. the late, um, surgery I had last summer. And so my question is, I have, you know, it's interesting listening to you, I have pins and needles that run up the left side uh, of my scalp, and then um, I have um, pain that's underneath the right um, shoulder blade, and it goes down and numbs the two fingers on my right hand, my, my last two fingers. Yep. So, could this all be one problem? Could it be on uh, what, what was the last part? One problem. Um, you know, so it's probably two different problems, you know, because that, that, that the head numbness is probably something a little bit different from the arm numbness, actually. They're probably two different things. But, um, but honestly, you know, the arm numbness is, is certainly probably coming from your neck for sure, I would suspect. Okay. The head numbness is something we would have to just look into a little bit further because that could be something more from the head. It could be something from your neck. It could be from some different areas. Okay, so the worst, the worst comfort is under, is like under and around my arm. Yeah. So um, these exercises that you gave, would they be something I could do? Yeah, you, can, you can definitely try to start them and just see how they go and just go slow with them. You know, don't overdo them and you know, just start focusing on changing your posture a little bit, trying to change, you know, your, your turning in your head and bending in your head, things like that. You know, just take it slow and see how that goes. And, you know, should be pain free. Um, a little bit of discomfort's okay, but not anything severe. Just nice and easy pain would be, that would be okay. Okay, well, I'll be coming in anyway with you guys. So, Good. I'm actually, I'm actually as straight as an arrow. I mean, That's I'm good. as straight. As an arrow. That's good. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you again. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else with any any other questions or concerns? pictures Well, hearing none. I want to thank everyone for coming. And like I said, what we'll do is tomorrow, we'll send you a follow-up email that will have the presentation, the exercises. I'll add in that diaphragmatic breathing handout. And again, if you're interested um, in setting up an evaluation or a free screen, give us, give the clinic a call. They all know that we, we were doing this tonight. They're hopefully expecting some, uh, some calls from tomorrow and you know, just give them a call and set up a time and we'd love to see you in the clinic. So thanks everyone for coming tonight and have a great night and we'll see you all soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks.